It's Nick and Mike's top 100 games. But does anyone care what they have to say? Lit. I know I don't. Cause they may doubt, they might scream, they may say some things that are plain wrong. Dab on it, dab on it. But they are dumb, dumb bing bongs. Matthew Juice better. <laughs> If you think the Brothers Merrick drink anything but the coldest damn water on earth, you're freaking high. You're joking. This is our top 100 games of all time. Sponsored by Coldest Water. Yes, it is. We are here to talk about numbers 80 to 71. Isn't that crazy? By the way, I'm Mike. I'm Nick. We are the Brothers Merrick. Hey. We're giving this here a list. So we have been through two segments so far of our top 100 games of all time. Crazy. And now we are into the 70s. The 70s. 70s, yeah. the era of disco and... Dopamine, man. I don't know. Probably, yeah. I was looking yeah. for alliteration. That doesn't yeah. make any sense. Dopamine like exists at all times. Yeah, people were happy and sad. You know, it's yeah, a lot you of know, stuff. It's fine. So yeah, as always, it's sponsored by the Coldest Water, who hit us up to pay us fifty dollars for ten total videos. They sent us an automated ways. email saying they were really interested in our about page because yeah. that's what shows the subscriber count. They said, "Hey, listen here, we'll give water bottles to anybody if you just do we ten said, videos. We'll give you, you fifty bucks." So here's the thing: if you're wondering, are the Bros Merc that easy to buy? The answer is yes. Oh yeah. Yes, that it's that easy. So and, and easier even, easier. It really is easier by that. So with that, we are going to start with number eighty. Hit it, baby. I'll do it right now. That's eighty in harmonica. So the thing about eighty is it's a cacao. That's what it is. Cacao. You know who's by? Praise be. Praise be. Phil praise Walker be. Hard A. The only thing that's more praise be than this water bottle is freaking Phil Walker Hard A. It is much more than that mm -hmm. water bottle. I'll tell you that. Uh, Phil Walker Hard A makes great family weight kind of uh, accessible entry level games, I would say. Uh, and oh, yeah. Cacao is no different. Cacao is a tile laying game where you're going to be placing, uh, you have a stack of your own tiles that have workers on some amount of the four sides of the square. Uh, and where you place those uh, workers next to jungle tiles, which will have things like plantations where you can get cacao, markets where you can sell cacao, temples where you can get points, mines where you can mine stuff and rivers. Uh, wherever you put workers there, it's going to activate that many times once per worker. Uh, so there's going to be this cool thing where you place workers out and I might put them w in between a, a plantation uh, and a market. And I can get two cocoa, and then I have two uh, or a worker on this side, and I can sell one of that cocoa immediately. But then later on, another market might come on this other edge, which to this point has not been covered yet. And I have a worker there. So as soon as that gets placed, even if Nick placed it, yeah. I get to activate that worker. So Super it's all cool. about like trying to put stuff in places where I get all the benefit, but I don't like just give my opponent something really cool. Yeah. But it's really light and easy. Um, and it's just accessible. Again, you're trying to get cocoa, sell that cocoa for points. Uh, you're trying to go up a river, which gets rid of your negative points, um, and then have the most workers around each temple, which will be kind of like a, an area majority uh, influence over the temples. And so it's super simple. That's cacao. Really yeah, cacao is great. We also uh, are we're next as time of this next week. We're gonna be in the middle of trying to play all of our games in one week, over 200 games. And this is one of the ones we tested to try to speed play. We played it in like six minutes. Pretty good. Pretty ace. Pretty, Pretty ace. Cacao is great. You can put cacao in here, by the way. You hot cacao. The hot cacao. Talking about putting beans like in a water bottle. Water. <laughs> um, my number 80 is Fleet the Dice Game, which is a game nice. I assume will, Mike, will show up higher than Mike. So this is a roll and write that I really, really, really enjoy. Uh, this is a game where if you like combo-tastic games, especially combo-tastic roll and writes, you got to try Fleet the Dice Game. Shouts out to Brant. Bam. Um, Fleet the Dice Game is a really, really fun game where you essentially are rolling out these dice and you're essentially, they're like these fish die have a couple different kinds of fish on it. You're essentially trying to get different kinds of boats in the water, so like a lobster boat and a cod boat and a swordfish boat, basically boats to go catch stuff. And then you're trying to catch fish with those boats. Every, every couple of rounds there's a fishing thing where all your active boats can catch fish up to their capacity. Yep. And basically you're doing all this stuff. There's like a harbor and a wharf that you can go to where you can like not cross off all these different things like roll and write style. But basically there's all these different ways to get extra stuff. So it's like, oh, every time this thing activates, you get to bubble out something else. You go do the, oh, you do this. Oh, because I bubble out this, I now get to bubble out something else. So and you start good. putting down these crazy combos and yeah. it is so, so satisfying. Yeah, it is. That's the word right there. Yeah, it's one of the most satisfying roll and rights out there because of the combo. So if you like combo roll and rights, check out Fleet the Dice Game. It is, ooh, chef kiss good with combos. It's really great. Um, yeah, that's yeah. my number 80. It's really fun. You'll see it on my list later. Ah, oh, yeah, that, that figured. 
Let's get a 79. Okay. 79. Number 79 is a two-player version of another game that I quite like, a two-player version of a party game. It's Codenames Duet. Oh, yeah. This is a two-player cooperative version of Codenames where now you have a grid of clues in between you. Uh, and I have a certain amount that I need Nick to guess. Nick has a certain amount that he needs me to guess. And there's three that we both uh, can yep. have the other one guess. We obviously don't know which three are our crossover ones. And so I'm going to be giving Nick on my turn a one word clue. And I can say it pertains to three of the words that are among the 25 in between us. And from my clue, my brilliant clue of Sasquatch, Nick has to be like, well, that obviously means tire iron. Matthew Jude. That means Matthew Jude. And that means cold water. All right. Those are the three oh, things in the gosh. middle of the grid. You know who can handle some cold water? Sasquatch. Sasquatch. Sasquatch creates a cold water. I would love to see Sasquatch hold that like a tiny little toy beer can. Boop, boop. Um, uh, and that's what you're going to be doing back and forth. And you only have like nine turns or eight turns. There's sort of a campaign mode. You can adjust the difficulty. Um, and it's just about trying to get into your, your, your teammate's head and yeah. trying to like... Have them see things and see connections yeah, see that the you together. see. Yeah. Like, these things are related to this clue because of this weird thing. And hopefully they pick up on that as well. And it's just a really fun kind of deduction game in that way and clue giving game. Uh, Codenames as a party game is really fun as well. But Codenames Duet is just awesome because A, you only need two people to play it. It makes it cooperative. And so it really it really rewards you for knowing your teammate well. Yeah. Um, it's just a great time. So that's Codenames Duet. I yeah. love it. Codenames Duet is, is great. My number 79 is Abyss. This is actually one that I expected to be higher on my list. Mike talked about this on his last list. Yep. It's only our second crossover, which is kind of cool. The crossovers will start happening more and things we get higher. Again, it's higher more about the, where they are, not necessarily what we have. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But Abyss is a great game by Bruno Catala. I think Christian Martinez, if I remember correctly. Um, Leaves, or Xavier. No, that's the... That's artist. Xavier I'm Collette's the artist. Um, but nonetheless... Uh, Abyss is a great game. Uh, Mike talked about it already, so I won't go too into it. But basically, this very simple game. It, the, the game looks more complicated than it actually is. The the high production value and great yeah. art actually is kind of deceiving. Basically, you can put cards out in this line and then offer them to your opponent. And then you, if the opponent takes one... There's a pearl economy in this. you got to pay pearls. Yeah, you got to pay pearls. So you can get a card up there. You can also take a, a stack of cards over here. Or you can buy... a. You can essentially get a lord on your side and they'll bring influence points. Influence points are your points. Um, and essentially, despite it being like this cool underwater world, it's not like a fighting game. It's like a political game. Now, again, yeah. you're not being political with each other, but that's the theme. Is that yeah, it's yeah. like this big like you're trying to get influence in the trying different to get in with the right people with the different factions of that, which I thought was a kind of an interesting take. Like, oh, we're gonna have this crazy cool underwater world, but it's gonna be this game that's all about like scheming politicians. Which I thought was kind of an interesting take on that. But Abyss is great. We really, really love it. Um, we, yeah, we just love it to death. Abyss is great. It's 79 for me. It's wonderful. So good. Check it out. Let me tell we're getting 78. 78. My number 78 is The Voyages of Marco Polo. It's a dice placement game. This one did not show up on my list because I've only played it once, but this is one when we were doing our list, I was like, this will be, I think, in my top 50, but only because I played it once. I just played it once very, very recently. Yeah, I was yeah. like, it's not going to be on there, but yeah. you played it more than I have, but I was like, this is going to be much higher on my I've, list eventually. It's just not right now. I played it once a long time ago, and then we played it recently on a stream, and then I played a flurry of times after. Yeah, so exactly. A lot recently, but it's a fantastic dice placement game. I actually figured this would be a little higher on your list, um, honestly. Well, stay tuned. Uh, oh, is that right? Uh, so the really? Marco Polo okay, is, a, is a, a dice placement game. Uh, where you're going to be rolling out dice and then you're going to be putting them on these different action spaces that will uh, gain you different types of resources. There's pants and camels and things like that and pepper and gold and whatever the shapes are. They're, th I just, they're the things theme. I like to think. Theme, you know? Uh, you can do that. You can use those things to then fulfill contracts. It's going to be the main way to get points. Uh, I think that's the heaviest bit is fulfill those contracts or you can travel around this board to different cities which will give you, number one, they'll give you unique uh, worker action spots that only you can go to or someone else who has visited that city before but not everyone has access to. So now I can do this thing that Nick can't do. Uh, there's all these other different smaller cities that will give you just kind of a, a bonus every round. There's five rounds in the game. So if you can get to those early, you'll just get camels every round now uh, and stuff like that. So you are trying to basically get these resources but everything is expensive because if I'm the first person yeah. to go to an action space and I have to put two dice down to get some pants, uh, that's cool. But if Nick had been there before 
and I now go here, I have to pay money to go there. Yep. And I have to pay based off of the value of the dice that I'm using. So now it's like, well, sixes are better than ones. Yeah, but you gotta pay six. But do I wanna pay six or do I wanna pay one? So now it's like, I don't have that much money so I can only get a weaker version of this action but it's all I can afford. So it's all about like the tightness of like getting the resources, getting money and stuff to just kind of get what you need done. And it can be a really tough battle, but it's really enjoyable. Yes. I really like Voyage of Marco Polo it's a lot. outstanding, yeah. Yeah, and it's it's just really fun. We, I played it a bunch lately. Yeah, um, you really have. It's really good. It's on Board Game Arena, which makes it nice and easy. Yes, it's so very quick. I would quick, recommend yeah. trying it because it's very quick. So yeah. uh, Voyages of Marco Polo is my number, whatever we're 78? on. 78? 78. 78. My number 78 is another worker placement game that we really like. I honestly think it's one of the best like intro to worker placement games out there, and that is Everdell. Oh, uh, oh Ever wow. You thought, you thought it'd be higher? Yeah. Yeah, I was actually, I, I, I think if we got the other... Didn't know you was a hating ass hater. <laughs> <laughs> I like Everdell a lot. Um... Oh, I do want to try the other two expansions, Spirecrest and Belfair, because I've heard they add a lot to the game. Um, and I think it'd probably go a little higher than that, but I, I love Everdell. Sure. I really, really Obviously do. quite highly rated. Yes, I think, it's, I think it's a really great game. And a lot of people, some people don't like it, but I, I, I like it a lot. It's, it's simple, but I love the, the, the um, relationship between the different critters you're trying to put into mm. play and the different buildings you're trying to put into play. You're trying to put cards out into this tableau, your little city there. And you put out critters and buildings, but every critter goes along with a building. So if you put out a building first, the critter that goes along with that, that building, if you have that critter, you can then put that critter in for free. Yeah. Which is super cool, trying to make that happen. Um, yeah, I really like it a lot. It's a, it's a very well-produced game. Uh, it's it's very, very pretty. The art's great. The board looks as great. Good, well produced Nothing, as that. Is there anything as well-produced as this, As good of art as this? Dude, dude, this is better than NASA. Bam. Like... Takes this into space. Wishes ain't got nothing on. The Elon Musk can't afford this. Uh uh. That's why they should hit us up. Twelve thousand subscribers. Yeah, that's get why wrecked. They go to YouTube.com/slash/ElonMusk/slash/about. Yeah, get wrecked. Um, and so I, I really like Everdell a lot. I, I this is one of the things like we talked about this before. Like your top one hundred or any top ten is just a snapshot in time. Like tomorrow, Holy Everdell place. might be twenty spaces higher. I don't know. It just depends on how I'm, I'm feeling too that day. about it. The day I made this, it was my 78. I like it a lot. I think it could go Respect. up with the other expansions, but we'll have to see. We don't have those expansions, so I go it down. Is. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Crap ass game. Crap ass game. Boom. 78, done. 77. <laughs> Seventy-seven. Speaking of tiny towns, Nick, like Everdell, tiny towns is my 77. Yeah. It's another small animal. There's, there's, there are, there are eras in board games yes. where things sort of dominate. Right now, it's all bees. Just bees are yeah, everywhere. Yeah, bees are everywhere. Uh, dinosaurs a couple years ago. Cats, dinosaurs, and we had in the middle there tiny little woodland creatures yeah, making and more building animals, stuff, yeah. like going tink, tink, tink was a thing. So Tiny Towns, uh, it, it, it very much lives in that theme where you are. Uh, uh, it's kind of roll and write. It's a roll and write, really. Yeah, where. Um, you're going to be going around, however many people you're playing with, and, and on the active, the build, master builder's turn, they're going to call out one of a type of resources, like brick, wheat, stone, wood, uh, and glass. Glass, yeah. Um, and they're just different colored cubes. And someone's going to call out glass. And the, and the theme of the, of the game, which I actually think is really kind of charming, the way to kind of get into it, saying like, resources are really scarce. You got more space, you got time And now. so if a, if a resource becomes available like glass, we're, we're not in a position to be picky. We can't turn it down. We can't just be like, nah, I don't want glass. So everyone has to make use of the resource that's available. So if someone calls out wood, everyone takes a wood and you have to put it in your board somewhere in a four by four grid. And then it's going to stay there until you hopefully get to turn it into a building. And the way you do that is you have to have a certain sequence of color cubes in the right shape, kind of a polyomino shape. And if you do that, you get to remove those cubes, opening up space. Put a building in, which then permanently lives in your town. So your yeah. town will shrink, yeah. but that will give you opportunities for scoring. Yeah. And that's what the whole game is about. It's about like, wheat came up again. What do I do with that? Where I, I this, yeah. I'm not trying to build that. How would I build this so I don't lock myself out? Because if at the end of the game you have empty spaces, you'll at least have one. Uh, empty space, you're going to lose points. Yeah. So it's it's a really tough puzzle. It's a tough puzzle. And then based on the types of uh, buildings that are out, they all want to be in different places. It's yeah. usually how they're um, 
how they're linked up and connected to other things. That's how they score. Yeah. So it's going to change how you uh, try to play because there's different versions of every type of. Yeah, it's kind of a simple thing you do with the game like this. Like the, the game itself doesn't change, but it's like the car scoring cards are always different. So now this game, approach. you're like, man, I need to not have these next to these anymore because yeah. yada yada yada. And we just got the two expansions. We haven't had a chance to play them yeah, yet. Yeah, I'm really excited. But though. I think this is that's going to make that be us like that game even more. We also yeah. play this game uh, with our chat a lot on Twitch. So, yeah. so check out our Twitch. Twitch on TV. Uh, at 77, that is Tiny Towns. My number 77 is a weird macabre game called The Bloody Inn. Nice. This is a game that um, is weird. It's a little card game where you and your family are running an inn. It's a co you know. competitive game despite the fact that you're all part of the same family. And you realize that it is much more financially beneficial for you to just kill your guests and take their money yeah. than to have them stay at your hotel. But you can't kill everyone because that gets too suspicious because there are police people who stay at your um, you know. who stay at your hotel. Oh, you can kill them too. It's really weird. But basically what you're doing is you're playing out these cards and you're bribing people to come onto your side, which makes doing the deed a little bit better. But once you kill the body, you then need to hide that body. Yep. So you need to bury that corpse somewhere, but you need somewhere to bury it. So it's cool because all the cards are like multi-use. Um, each card can be used, used to do any of those actions, um, but also each card can be built into an annex. An annex basically means they build out that part of your house, and now I have like a master bedroom in my, in my inn, and now that master bedroom can hold three corpses underneath it. So you're trying to build out your inn a little bit so you can have places to hide bodies, and the cool thing is no matter what action you're doing, it's exactly the same. If you yep. want to kill this it's person, this person's ranked three, you need to turn in three cards to do it. That's three cards. If you want to bribe that person, it's three cards to do that. If you kill them, you need to bury that corpse, it's three cards to do that. If you want to build that person into an annex, it's three cards to do that. It's exactly the same for all of them. So it's a very simple game, but it's got this weird balance of back and forth. It's, and it's, it's a tricky puzzle to balance It's a tricky those cards. little puzzle. It's yeah. very, very fun. Really weird theme. So if it's too dark, I totally get that, but I really like it. It's also got some of my favorite art in any game. It's the cool thing about it. It's like macabre. It's not bloody in any way. No, it's no, just... no. What you're doing is kind of like, oh, right, you're like, oh, weird theme. It's great. I love the Bloody Inn. I think it's incredible. It's, it's, yeah, it's one. It's wonderful. It's fun. I like it nice. a lot. 77. Let's do 76. 76. So my number 76 is a game that we got lucky to play at all because it was just here for work purposes and then we got to check it out. It's Monumental. Ooh. It's a big deck building game. This could have made mine if we got to play it more. Yeah, yeah I, I really enjoyed this game, man. I really wanted to, I was hoping to be able to keep it. Um, yeah. <laughs> but, really you know, though. that's how it goes. Yeah, I know. It was here for work, and then it left because of work. So, uh, this is a big deck building game, Civ game, uh, Civ style game. Yeah, um, this is a good game, man. Really this is cool. a good game, man. Because it's, it's, it's got all of this, um, even the basic version, but certainly we had like the deluxe Kickstarter version uh, for the purposes of making our video. And it's got minis, so it's all and the minis dressed are, up. Yeah, the minis really are super cool, yeah. and it's you know based off of kind of uh, people, real and mythical people, like Heracles, and then yeah, it's Einstein, kind of civilization with a bit of fantasy in there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, a bunch of really cool minis and things you can add in, and you're basically going to be doing deck building, kind of to do all the standard Civ game things. You can build wonders of the world. You can discover new lands and have area control. You can develop technologies. You can have culture and stuff. All those things you'd expect to see. But that's something I really enjoy about those kinds of games is they all have similar features. Yes. And that's what made me really enjoy Monumental. I'm like, oh yeah, here are the pyramids. We always get to build oh, Stonehenge. Okay, cool. And you're moving through eras to modern times. Uh, and this game was really neat because I thought it was like a fighting miniature game. And then I find out it's this deck building game which you get resources and then buy cards to then move using your military out into the world to get different perks and stuff like that. It's very, um, just all the kind of stuff that we enjoy. Yeah. Uh, getting resources, resource management, that deck building, but it has a cool thing where you have nine cards in front of you and you're gonna activate five of those nines by activating one row and one column. And that'll give you kind of your, your hand of five. A normal yeah. deck builder might draw five cards, but here you have nine cards, but you only get to use five. And that was really oh, interesting. It's such a cool mechanic. Like, Ooh, what do I... Hmm, and then those I cards go away, and you fill them back you in. fill in what you use. It's really cool. Yeah, so there's just a lot of fun stuff, and I just really enjoy moving through the time. And there was so much more that we didn't get to explore, and you get to have, like, these heroes you get to yeah, add we didn't in, any or these of that, monsters yeah. you get to add in. So there's all this stuff that we didn't get to try, but the base game itself was really fun. Yeah, yeah, I really like Mighty Metal. I really want to If we got to play it more, um, I probably would probably make it yeah. I really, the, the deck building mechanic, I thought was so cool. It's really yeah, cool. Yeah, I thought it was great. So that's my 76. My number 76 is a game that wouldn't have made our list, uh, wouldn't have made my list, rather. I doubt yours either if it's on your list. 
uh, a couple years ago, even though we had it back then, it's because we started playing it more recently. That is Eclipse. We got oh, yeah, Eclipse yeah. very, very early on into our board gaming hobby. Too early, someone said. Way, way too early. <laughs> At that point, it was in the top 10 of BGG, and I was like, oh, this is one of the best games out there. It's space. That seems cool. And I bought it yeah. for us, and we immediately read the rules, and we're like, whoa. It was way too heavy of a game to start with. But now, since we play with more people, we're more used to those kinds of games, our friend Crook really wanted to play it. And so now the three of us play it, not super, super often, but we would play it every few months. And it, I really, really like Eclipse. It's, it's just a big 4X space game. Yeah. Big hexagonal tiles. You each get a big alien race. You're getting technologies, you're putting out ships, you can fight each other, you're, you're kind of exploring the world, trying to colonize little planets and stuff, all this different kind of stuff, you're getting money. It's it's a really, really cool take on those kinds of games. It's kind of big, again, big 4X game, but I really, really like it, but with three people, we can play it in like hour and a half, two hours yeah. usually. And it's great, because that it's game, epic we've played with like five, for, and it it's, gets long, but it's like, you can get it's those kind of like, I want, I want my 4X fix, but I want it in like two hours. And the three of us can play it. And I really like Eclipse a lot. And I'm glad that we've kept it all these years. Because now I'm like, yeah. oh, great. Now we can play it. Yeah. Because we actually have someone to play it with. And now we can understand the game. <laughs> Whereas before we couldn't. But I really like Eclipse a lot. And it's my number uh, 76. It's a nice. great 4X game um, that kind of was in our lives. And then wasn't because we just were terrified to play it. We, now it's back in there. It's we great. We always hung on to it. We yeah. knew there was something there. Oh, yeah. You know? Uh, nicely done, my sir. So that's 76. We'll get in the second half of this with number 75. 75. Oh, 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 man, oh, man. You got the shivers. <laughs> the cold water shivers. Look at that. They do have to legally say that might be a lifelong thing if you drink it too much. You have to be careful. It's an insurance thing from the cold water, they mm -hmm. must say. You have to, you have to, you have to by a warm fire. You have to spread it out. I'm going to put a warm fire behind you. Don't worry about it. I'm going to warm you okay, up. There you go. You, thank the you. hottest thank coffee you. mixed with the Ooh. coldest Ooh. water. Thank you. What a combo. Uh, my oh, number 75, man. folks, uh, will get you right, and it'll help you learn how to read. If you're into monster books, it's Ex Libris. Mm. Where you're trying to run your own library. Okay. It's a worker placement game where uh, you're going to be trying to draw cards, which will have a uh, different uh, shelf, basically, section of books um, that will you're going to be putting into a library and you need to put them all alphabetically. You can build one that's a, a tableau of cards in front of you that's three levels high. Um, at the max, I think three, yeah? Yes. And then you can have to put them all alphabetically. So on the top left corner, they're going to show this is A2, meaning there's one A before and there's it's A2 of seven or whatever. Yeah. So you know how many of each letter there is. You're trying to build up this thing so that you can be able to slot shelving units basically in the right spot. And um, all the worker placement spots will basically help you do that. They'll help you draw cards, shift cards around, get rid of stuff. Um, and it's all in this fantastical setting. So all the books are individually have like their own unique titles and they're all like monster manuals and different things like that. And so it just has a really fun yeah. theme to oh, it. Oh, it's great. And then each library has an asymmetrical little power to it, which I recommend you play with. And there's a whole bunch of those. You can be like a golem and they might have this ability or the gelatinous cube and they can do that thing. So there's all sorts of just really fun stuff. But ultimately it's to kind of put together this puzzle where you're trying to organize these shelves alphabetically and stuff and have the most of certain types of books. There's banned types of books. You're trying to have the least amount of those. So there's just a lot of little puzzly elements to consider. And it's a really fun game. Really like Ex Libris. Yeah, Ex Libris is great. My 75. You ain't wrong. My number 75 is a game called Stone Age. This is a great worker placement game that Kind of a game always like, ah, eh, you know, I'm kind of over Stone Age. Then we play it again. I'm like, no, oh, Stone Age is great. It's really fun. Stone Age is great. But this is a game where you are in the Stone Age and you are, um, it's a worker placement game, uh, kind of a worker investment game in terms of where all the different worker placements, a lot of the worker placements, especially for resources, you can put more than one worker. The more workers you put there, the more chance you have of getting those supplies. Yeah. And that's one thing that Mike always brings up with this game is it's very subtly thematic because in yeah. the beginning of the game, you can't do much. You can really only hunt for food and do maybe one or two other things because food is so scarce. But as you get better, you start increasing your agriculture, which is just give you food every turn. And so all of a sudden, food becomes less and less of an issue. And that way, you can start branching out and doing some of the other actions. Whereas before, you basically have like one worker to do anything else. The rest have to go to food because you have to feed your people. Yeah, I say fed. And so it's one of those things where it's it's very kind of cool to see like your little your little tribe or whatever get better because at the end of the game like you're not worried you don't even have to hunt for food at all because you're like food's taken care of i'm good Forget it. we're good to go 
and you're basically trying to get brick, wood, stone, and gold to basically put in these little buildings in a place. These buildings are gonna give you points. You can also get these cards that will give you points based off of a couple different things. But the cool thing is, is it's kind of all done in division. It's a good way to teach kids division or something like that. Because if I go to um, the food spot, however many workers I have there, I'll get to roll out that many die. And then whatever the sum of all those die is, I'm gonna divide that by two and that's how much food I get. Yeah. So food's relatively easy to get. If I'm doing it with wood, it's the exact same thing. However many workers, roll out that many die, but now I have to divide it by three. Brick, you divide it by four. Stone, you divide it by five. And gold, you divide it by six. Hard to get gold. So even if you have like three or four workers there, if you don't roll at least six, you don't get anything because it's gold. It's hard to get, it's scarce. And so it's this really cool thematic way to go about it. And it's just, it's super fun, it's great. Um, it's classic, it's been around for a while. And yep. rightfully so, it's wonderful. Stone Age is great. It's awesome. That's yeah. 75 for the both of us. Yeah. Spin the 74. 74! So my number 74, Nick, was mentioned by you last uh, episode, I believe. It is a worker placement game all about trying to make the most fantastical, fun, perfect life for you. It's the pursuit of Really? I, I thought this wouldn't be on your list. Uh, I mean, yeah, it's there for now. Hey, yeah. no, that's that's really totally fun. I, that's no shade. I love it. It's super fun. As Nick mentioned, it's a worker placement game, and it's fairly basic in terms of yes. uh, the worker spots. You're just going to get things. You're going to get different types of resources. There's money, but then there's also inspiration, creativity, influence, essentially, to... Uh, that you're going to be using to get different things. Uh, you're going to, you can start collections. You can spend your money on hobbies and stuff like that. You can you can invest your time in um, different skills and projects and stuff like that. You can get a spouse. You can get a job. And it's really up to you how you you want to live. How you want to live your life because all of them can lead to long term happiness, which is your points. And it's just a fun game. I agree with Nick. I just want to make a really fun, interesting Who life. Cares about winning. Yeah. Yeah, who cares? It's just like, I want to make something really odd and strange and just try to see that. Like, can I go my whole life without ever getting a job? Let's find out. Let's you see. You know what I mean? Uh, and it's just a fantastically fun, cool idea for a game. Uh, how you use your time in life uh, and try to avoid stress and live the most fun life possible. I think it's a healthy thing. And it shows that there's lots of ways of happiness. Yeah. Uh, so you just got to find the ones that work for you. So that's uh, The Pursuit of Happiness is my number 74. Great All right. replacement game. Great game. Uh, number 74 for me might be, it might be the newest game on my list. Okay. I'll think we'll see that go through, but I, I think it might be the newest game. This is Raj of the Ganges, The Dice Charmers, which is the oh. brand new Essen release roll and ride. Do you not have it on there? Nope. <laughs> I forgot to That would have been it. on this Bing Bong's list for hey. freaking sure. That's your 101 now. Screw Raccoon Tycoon. <laughs> No! Roger the Gajis, the Dice Charmers, hates it. This guy hates the game. The only thing he hates more is warm water. That's why he's got a cold water bottle. Bam! Um, Roger the Gajis, the Dice Charmers, no. is the roll and ride version of Roger the Gajis. It just came out at Essen. So we're filming this. It's uh, November 16th. So this came out like a couple weeks ago. It's already in the 70s. It's, it's so I fun. like this game so much. It's now, granted, really this is fun. brand new. We are super hot on it. So this may settle a little farther than this, or it might yeah. settle higher. I don't Probably know. Higher. But this really feels like Raj of the Ganges, which is one of our favorite games. I know it's going to show up Just higher on both of us. It's somehow in there. It's not. It's not. It's, <sighs> forgot failing. To failing forgot over to here. It. Oh, my Lord. Yeah, it's great. But basically, if you like, kind of like I talk about Fleet the Dice game, mm. another roll and with a lot of combos, this game is combo so passing. <laughs> you're doing all this stuff, but you're doing a lot of the same stuff you're doing in Raj of the Ganges, where you are building out your province and like putting roads, places, you're moving up the river and getting stuff, mm -hmm. you're s gathering goods, you're selling goods, you can activate some of the kind of famous people of the time, all this kind of stuff. But the thing is like a lot of these things get you a bonus, which now allows you to go activate this person. This person allows you to go do here. Now I can build a road over here. Ooh, I just got another good. Ooh, now because I got so another good, fun, I get to activate this. I can sell that good. Ooh, this allows me to move up the river. And you get to do all these and this Bing Wong is good. At, I, he crushes me. I'm not very good at the game, but I freaking love it. So and again, fun. it just came out. We're super hot on it, but I really think it's going to be one of my favorite Roll and Rides. Um, yeah. I like it because we love Roger the Gandhi's, and it's a Roll and Ride version of that. It's good. It's really good. It's really good. So 74, <laughs> hates it, love it, no. hates it, love it. Don't love it as much as this, but love it more than that. Man. And this, I don't know what's going on. 74. Let's get to 73. 
My number 73 is one that's popped up kind of recently in terms of enjoyment because I played it more now. And I, I every time pr prior when I played, it, I was like, I really like this. This is number nine. No, oh, well, the game, the number fun, nine. <laughs> number nine is number 73. Yeah, there you go. Uh, it's a really fun. I mean, kind of, I don't think it's on my list, but I'm the same boat. I'm always like, eh, then I play, we played it more recently. I'm like, I know, this game's it's great. It's really cool. It's, just, it, it's a polyominal tile laying game where uh, someone, whoever's, everyone between everyone that's playing, they'll flip over a card that's going to dictate what number you have to add to your little tableau of tiles that you're building out in front of you. And they'll be zero through nine. Each number will come up two times and you'll add those tiles. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to build a base, essentially, of, uh, of tiles that all work together with no gaps and stuff because you eventually want to start building up, but the way to build up, you have to be touching at least two tiles that are beneath it and you cannot have any gaps beneath it. It has to be fully supported. So you're trying to build this nice structure and the way it works is everything on the ground level is not worth any points. Everything one level up is worth their face value. So an eight would be eight points. Everything a level above that is multiplied by two and then three and so on. So you're trying to build this base up so you can get your nines off the ground, but nines are also kind of the best for building because they're big, solid yeah, things. They're good for base. Versus other things have gaps and a bunch of weirdness. And it's just a really tricky, puzzly yeah. tile laying game of this polyominal nature. Uh, and you're just trying to build up and it's just really fun. I really like this game. We played it a few times more recently, which reminded me, I'm like, man, I actually really yeah, enjoy this. Yeah, number nine's a great puzzle game. It's really great. And so it's my number seven. You also play with an infinite amount of people. If everyone has, has, everyone has a game, copy of the game, you yeah. can be like seven. Everyone's like, I got it. You yeah, know? it's great. It's really fun. Yeah, number nine is wonderful. Uh, my number 73, Mike mentioned already on uh, a different list. Oh, the, in the top hundred, I think it was in your nineties, but this is Zombie Side Black Plague. Okay, yeah. Zombicide uh, is, again, as Mike said last one, one of the games that got, really got us to dive into the hobby. It's we a were, banger. We were a little bit in the hobby, but this made us dive full full we in. We shifted gears a little bit here. Yeah, and we got a couple of the Zombicide throughout the throughout the years, but we've really settled on Zombicide Black Plague and gotten rid of the rest of them because they're, in the end, the same game. Um, and then, But Zombicide Black Plague fixes a lot of the issues we had the other one. And now, as Mike said, it's got this really great companion app. So we actually got rid of a lot of the stuff. We got rid of all the dashboards. We got rid of all the cards. Don't because them. you don't need them more because we run everything through the companion app. And honestly, I don't think I'd play the game Unless it was like maybe at a convention, some kind of special thing, I wouldn't play the game if I didn't have the companion app. It's too much. It's too it much just stuff. Just makes it more fiddly for no reason. But yeah, I'll play with my roommate a decent amount because he really likes this game too. And so we've been kind of getting back into it lately, and it's just it's just fun. It's just a big co-op game. Zombie hordes coming in. You're always playing a new scenario where you have different objectives, different stuff you're trying to do. And then the layout's different. And then just yeah, there's just hordes of zombies coming. You have to kill them. You have to go over here and do this stuff. It's just fun. I really like it a lot. We uh, did the Kickstarter for Zombicide Black Plague. So we have a lot of like extra characters and stuff like that. And we just have way more than we'll ever need. So yeah. we're kind of like, okay, cool. We don't need any more Zombicide. Yeah. There's been a couple more that have come out. We're like, cool, we're good off that. We have the one we like and we're good. But I do still like Zombicide Black Plague uh, quite a bit. And that's why it's my number 73. Good pick, man. Yeah. Let's get to 72. 72. Would you say, Nick, like if I'm Treebeard, like the Hobbits would be like this size on my shoulder? Cruising? That's about right. It's a scale. It's all right. It's, very it's about right. scale. So um, not only does it hold cold water, it's perfect hobbit, hobbit to and scale That's size. what they use on set in, in, in uh, New oh, Zealand right? to, to get oh, the, the eye lines right for Ian Kellen. Oh, it's Kellen. perfect. That makes sense. Yeah, uh, absolutely. So my number 72 is actually the Lord of the Rings Journeys in Middle Earth. Okay. Which is based off the Mansions of Madness system in, in that it uses an app to kind of generate a lot of the game elements and, and challenges and things like that. Uh, so Lord of the Rings Journey to Middle Earth does that, but puts it in the setting we way prefer, which is Lord of the Rings, which is awesome. Yeah. You have to play as some of your favorite characters from the greater Lord of the Rings lore, some from kind of Lord of the Rings trilogy, other from uh, extended stories from Middle Earth, basically. Uh, and it's super fun because we have all these tiles and stuff that we're moving on to, but the game is going to say, like, get this tile, get that tile, and we build it out. And then it says, like, over here, there's this thing. And then we can go over there and then within the app, get some story elements it's about such a cool what imitation. that is. Like, yeah. oh, there's, there's this, there's this uh, thing at the top of a tree you're going to try to find out. You have to do this climbing check, essentially. There's different um, kind of skill sets you can do these checks on. And you're drawing out cards to try to get successes and stuff. But it's all dictated by the app. And the app will change stuff and will make things different. If you Even if you play the same scenario over and over, it won't be exactly the same. It'll be slightly different. The yeah. layout will be different. Um, and so it just, it's a really cool blend of technology and analog. Yes. 
um, that I really appreciate. And something really cool, something like Lord of the Rings and Middle Earth, where it's these these themes that we really enjoy, and, you, and you're being told stories. Yeah. Um, because there's these really cool story elements, um, and it just really it's immersive. Yeah. I really enjoy it's very this immersive. game. It's actually not on my list. I don't check. Uh, I thing is we we've started this game like five different times because we, we keep playing with more. new groups. People are like, oh no, no, let's just start at the beginning because we want because it's so cool. Yeah. So we've only ever gotten a couple scenarios in because we keep restarting it. And I think when we get a little farther in, I think it will definitely be on my list. But as of right now, it's not on there That's yet. Fair. But I That's fair. really like the game. Yeah. Man. It's it's just really interesting and fun. It's and, so immersive. And yeah. The the app and stuff works really well. It's very cool. Very yeah. slick system. Yeah. Really uh, cool. So I really enjoy it. Lord of the Rings, yeah. Journeys in the Middle Earth. One number 72 is a two-player trick taking game that showed up on Mike's list, and that is Claim. Um, I really, really like uh, Claim. So Claim good. is a game by Scott Alms, and it's basically, as Mike said, it's a game, there's like, there's technically two claims and there's a couple expansions for claims as well, but you can mix them all up and stuff like that. Basically, there's a bunch of different factions in the game. Those are your suits yeah. and it's trick taking. Someone leads the suit, you have to follow unless you don't have that suit, then you can throw off and stuff like that. But all the factions do different stuff. They have different abilities they do. Like knights will always beat goblins even if you have the strongest, the strongest goblin versus the yeah. weakest knight, knight will always win. And essentially you're playing for a face up card that card is, uh, whoever wins that trick will get that card. The other player will get a card off the top of the deck. So you play 13 tricks. So by the end of that, you'll each have 13 cards. And then you take those 13 cards that you essentially drafted in kind of a weird way. And you play uh, out again. Play again. Play again. And then at the end of the second round, um, you see who has a majority in the, the different races. So if Mike has more dwarves, he wins the dwarves. If I have more giants, I win the giants. And basically, at the end, whoever has the most majorities wins the game. But the majorities only count for the whole second round. All the cards from the first round go away. Yeah. So the whole first round, you're just trying to set up the second round. And the second round, you're trying to get majorities. And so it's this really cool, interesting thing. And then on top of that, you put, which is already an interesting enough idea, and then you throw in all the different abilities on the, all the different factions. It makes it such a cool, unique game. And on top of that, there's a ton of different factions because they've done some expansions. So like you have there's, all, you can throw in all sorts of weird stuff and the yeah. main game will always be different. And then trick taking is just great. And claim great is awesome. Mechanism. I really, really like it. Um, I can't wait to keep on exploring it because I really love claim. And that's why it's my number 72. I like it. Quite a bit. Great art, too. Yeah, great art, too. Mihalo Dmitrievsky. Uh, Miko, man. Uh, let's right. go to 71. 71. 71. <sighs> so many more to go. Last one of this list, Mikey. Last one of this list. One, one last sip. Oh. One last sip. Mm. One last sip. Mm. I'm so parched. Oh, mm. that still has coffee in it from... Not 20 minutes ago when we recorded the last one. We changed our shirts and everything, Mike. What? I blew, I ruined the illusion. <laughs> um, this is Trajan. <laughs> My number 71. Trajan, huh? Trajan, we're Feldheads, dude. We are Feldheads. We like Seth and Feld like over Feld here. A lot. Uh, Trajan is a Seth and Feld game which uses kind of a Moncala uh, little aspect to kind of dictate what action you're going to take. Um, and you're doing a lot of, it's very kind of Seth and Feldy in that there's like, a bunch of different things you can do. They will all get you points. Probably it's great to do a bunch of them, but you should probably focus on a couple of them and do them well. Uh, and basically the different types of actions you can take, you'll be able to put tiles out over here in this little construction area. And you're trying to kind of put a bunch of ones that are connected together to get these bonuses and things. You can kind of move troops out, get troops and move them about in the lands at the top of the board, uh, which will get you bonuses and perks like that. There are, um, uh, shoot. A whole bunch of other things. A whole bunch of it's, it's, a, like, it's, a, it's a point. Like, it's a point salad. There's like, a point. Yeah, it's like the whole thing. You can get everything gets you points. <laughs> boats in like the Senate or whatever. Yeah, there's a like, million one things you can build stuff and all that. That's why it's um, great. And try to get these uh, uh, cards to ship off and sort of a set collection element again. Stuff on stuff on stuff. Um, but it's really cool the way you kind of kind of work these um, these little hex cube things. Uh, around your board to say like this is the thing I'm going to activate and you're going to be moving things around so it becomes yeah. this really interesting puzzle of like how do I get the right things in the right places yes. so I can then move them to the right action that I need and that can actually be a really challenging it's hard. puzzle yeah. um, and so it's just really fun it's one that I've continued to enjoy exploring I want to explore further try to get good at it because I'm definitely not that I'm horrible at it 
uh, objectively, but it's just a really fun, interesting game, especially if you don't mind a more kind of dry, Euro-y, Steffenfeld type game because it feels fairly mechanical and stuff. But I actually really like the look of it and everything. But it's um, not it's not zombie side. No, so sure ain't. Uh, you know, there's that. But I really enjoy Trajan. Uh, so it's number seventy one for me. Number seventy one is Spas Bas. Nice. Spasels okay. und Basels. Uh, it's a great Johnny Claire game. Um, really, really great game. Uh, that is. A game with virtually no downtime, which is always nice. But basically, you're building yep. out a space base. Your space right. base is a slot of 12 cards for every pip different, on different the two ships. die. Exactly. And you basically have ships in those spots. And on your turn, you're going to roll out two dice. Yep. Um, and you can basically roll out, you can basically activate the ship in each die. So if you roll like a one and a three, I can activate ship one and ship three, or I can combine them and activate ship four. So that's how you get up past six is if you want seven, eight, nine, or 10, you're going to have to combine those two dice. They're which usually is more great. valuable. Those, they tend to be much spaces. more valuable because they come up less often. So basically and that's what you do. And then you are getting uh, income, which will just give you money. Basically it starts your base of money off higher. You can get rockets, which are your points. Um, or you can get money and you buy, you get money to buy new ships and the ships all have a certain slot they go into like slot six. It'll go there and the ship that's already there will come out, flip around and go behind your board. And all the ships that are behind your board activate on other people's turns. Yeah. So then later if Mike rolls a three and a three, I can combine those and activate the six that's behind my board. So you're always interested in what's going on because you're like, ooh, okay, oh, he rolled Maybe a four and a three. Oh, I can yeah. activate four and three. So you get money. So by the time it comes back around to you, you might already have a bunch of money and then you roll out your die and activate your ships. And so there's like no downtime. You're always interested. You're always kind of moving your stuff around and basically just trying to build out your engine of ships. And it's super, super fun, super simple. There's a lot of different kinds of cards. They also do different stuff. Like one, when you activate them, it can like increase your dice, or when you activate this card, it actually allows you to activate this card over here. Whole bunch of different stuff that they do, which is super cool. Uh, we recently got the Shy Pluto expansion, which is kind of like a legacy campaign-y version of it, which we haven't had a chance to play yet, but I'm very, very excited. I like Space Space a lot. It's simple, it's great. It's just, John DeClaire is a freaking wonder. Knows how to make a game. Yeah, knows how to make a game. John DeClaire does. Yeah, that's right. Uh, well, that's the end of this section, isn't it? Oh, it is, right. Yeah, wow. 71, wow. Bam. Uh, shouts out, uh, as we always joke around saying shouts out to Coldest Water, but we do want to give a genuine, honest shouts out to our Coldest pa Water patrons who oh, the patrons, also sorry. drink Coldest Water. Only them. Uh, thank you to our patrons, everybody. Yes. We really appreciate everything you do. Thank you to everyone that supports us uh, here, supports us on our great community on Twitch and Discord. Yeah. We really appreciate it. Um, it really helps us out. If you like what we do, you want to see us continue our stupid brand of silliness, like responding to an email when people pester us about this water bottle. Uh, please consider our Patreon. We'd appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> to be uh, fair, we have to get a bus stop ad we do. because of our Patreon because that was one of the goals. So That's something it's, you did. It's equally dumb across the board. It's equally dumb across the board. We are we are never afraid to be silly. Uh, but thank you so much for joining uh, for another section of this Top 100. Let us know what you think of these 10 games that we each picked. If you're following along and doing your own Top 100, let us know what 80 to 71 looks Put like for there. you uh, in the comments below. We'd love to see those picks. Uh, and am I missing anything? That's it. Well, then I'm Mike. I'm Nick. We've been the Brothers Murph, and we'll see you in the next section of the Top 100 Games of All Time. Bam. Thank you so much for watching that 80 to 71. Mm. If you want to watch the last list, we've randomly started here. Go and check out that Don't video miss those games. up there. And then if it's already out, that video down there will be the next 10. So you just click right on keep through. keep the train going. And while you're here, make sure to subscribe and turn the bell on to get all the notifications for when we go live. We have a lot of cool stuff coming out, including a marathon. We're playing, trying to play all 200 of our games in one week. That's going to work. Yeah. But thank you for being here.